Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Talking Football podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to say we're joined on the line this week by Dundee United uh, legend Freddie Vanderhoorn. Freddie, thank you very much for coming on. You're welcome, more than welcome. Legend is a big word there, just a player from Dundee United long times ago. Yeah, yeah. well they hold you in high regard. But, but, uh, enjoy, but, but, but yeah, we enjoyed our time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, great career, uh, Freddie. Um, before we look back on, on your career, though, um, we were just speaking off air about uh, uh, COVID. Um, uh, have you been keeping safe and well? Has it affected you and, 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 yeah. and your family? Thank- yeah, thanks God. Uh, two weeks ago, I got my first vaccine, so that's 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 very uh, thankful for that. And uh, yeah, it's a crazy year. Eh? Uh, it was a very in the area where we are living in the south of Holland. 20, 30 kilometers from here, it was a very uh, war zone. People dying uh, all the, uh, every minute, let's say. So it was a very bad period. And who could imagine uh, two, three years ago that something happened uh, in the world? It's a crazy time and everybody gets uh, with the feet on the ground, in my opinion now, and get a new fresh start. And let's hope we get uh, everything back on track. Yeah, absolutely. Um- your career then, uh, Freddie, um, when you were born back in 1963, uh, growing up as, as a young boy, were you always kicking a, a ball around? Yeah, when I was five, I got uh, introduced at the uh, uh, club here, uh, amateur side uh, nearby, yeah. and I played football uh, yeah, all, all the time, and I was 17, 18 years, I got my first contract, and then uh, well, the rest is history. Yeah, now, you, You'd have been growing up at a time when... Uh, Holland were really the, the 70s team was yeah. the, one of the, the best teams in the world did, we, yeah. did, did you remember watching them at, at World Cups? Yeah 74 the final against Germany is still uh, in the memories of uh, yeah. people of my age and, and all the ones uh, especially because losing against Germany is similar as Scotland losing from England or winning from England so yeah and then 78 again in the final against Argentina so uh, last minute on the post, and uh, yeah, we Holland produced a lot of uh, good players, uh, uh, top class players, Scotland as well. But the structure in Holland is maybe it was a little bit better during those years than it was in Scotland. I I yeah. suggest. Yeah, I know you are a defender, Freddie. But did you um, did you have any role models, any players that you, you wanted to be like uh, growing up? Yeah. Yeah, Bruno Petzai, the one uh, playing in Germany, was a well. I liked him as a player. Yeah. And Baresi, obviously from Milan, was a was a great player as well. So they were a little bit older than me. So you want to try to be similar than that, but they were different class players, and uh, I enjoyed my time, as I said. Yeah. Now, you joined, of course, uh, Den Bosch, wasn't it? And, and, and was it eighty four? You, yeah. you joined them. Was that, that was that your hometown yeah. club? Yeah. Yeah, hometown club. I played uh, one year earlier in the second team. Because well, it's, a sim- it's, it's not a similar system in in, the, in Holland than it is in Scotland. So I came in the they play on the Saturday and the Sunday the first team, and we played with Hillhouse, who played in Aberdeen yeah. as well. You remember yeah. him? So we played together in the second team, and then we got to the first team. And then uh, after uh, five years, four four or five years, uh, Jim McLean uh, bought me. Yeah, yeah, from the yeah. And yeah. yeah. um, see, see them. The academy over there in, in Holland is it, is it different than, than Scotland? I'd imagine, but um, what was it like? Were you, were you cleaning uh, players' boots and, and things like that? Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just uh, everybody is the same here. Everybody's playing football, and uh, there are people who uh, won the books for to doing that. Uh, nobody cleaning uh, uh, dressing rooms or cleaning boots from first team players or whatever. Yeah. Uh, they came to the club at this moment of time uh, when they are seven years I think it's a little bit too too young because I think they must uh, play at the uh, amateur sites in, in their own village or in their own town now they go to the professional clubs when they are six, seven years they're training three, four, five, six times a week they get uh, education at school which is uh, combined to, to, the, to the football yeah. so they train at 11 o'clock in the morning going back to school training at four o'clock and then going home by buses, minivans. And then uh, that's it every day. And Wednesday is normally the day off, Saturday the matches. And uh, that's the way it goes. And if you are uh, an interesting uh, prospect for the clubs, at 17, 16 years, you get a contract. 
And then, uh, well, then you are tight at the club, and when you are very good, you go to the first team, and then maybe you get a career. Yeah. Can you remember making your debut, Freddy? Yeah, it was an away game. Uh, can't remember the, the team, but it was an away match. Yeah. And I got, uh, I was substitute, and I came on in the, at half time, and I never get out. Yeah, that was that. From and that start, I, I never. Really, I never, I never got out of the team anymore. Yeah, um, when I was in, I get it. I didn't get out. Yeah, what was it like as a young boy playing for um, your hometown club? Was it living the dream? I yeah, imagine because I, yeah, our coach was uh, uh, Rinus Isel. He played against Celtic in the yeah. European Cup final a long, long time ago, yeah. and he was our coach. He was a sweeper as well from Feyenoord Rotterdam. He was the captain. And uh, well, he uh, he learned me all the tricks uh, from yeah. that position. So, and he said when I was young, we were young. Uh, I was young, a father as well with my wife. Uh, she's in the in the kitchen now. <laughs> and he said you can play twenty years professional football if you stay fit and stay focused, etc. And well, it happens. So yeah. it was good. Yeah, I was looking at some of the players that you played with, uh, Den Bosch. Real good players, the likes of. Um, well, Theo de Jong was there, wasn't he? And then he became the coach. Um, did you learn off yeah, him? Yeah, he played in the '74 finals as well from uh, uh, the Netherlands, Dutch team. Yeah, uh, he's been my coach as well after that because he was uh, when Israel left, he came as a, uh, he went coach. I became captain, and uh, yeah, of course you learn from everybody, from the best and from from some less players as well because uh, you, you try to, to to look at the habits they have and if you can take something from that you must try to do that yourself as well yeah absolutely and um, how, how much did you enjoy being the captain yeah well uh, I don't see a big difference between a captain and a normal player it's, it's just your attitude or your character or your mentality or uh, looking after the boys that's what I did when I was in Holland and when I came to Scotland uh, yeah, but that's completely different because you are a foreigner and uh, things going differently at at United during those times because it was one captain which was Jim Glean. Yeah. And, uh, and we were all players. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, before we touch on Dundee United, some other players that were there, um, Arnold Scholten was a great player, wasn't he? He went to Ajax and, and, yeah, really. and helped yeah. him win the Champions League. And uh, Guido van de Kamp, you, you'd yeah. come across him as well, the goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Arnold Scholl, well, he was a, a substitute because uh, we had another uh, a better goalie, to be honest, yeah. Jan van Grinsven. He's, uh, he just left the club a year ago, something like that, because he got a lot of jobs as well uh, uh, at the club. Yeah. Arnold Scholl, uh, I played with him in the amateur side when we go to FC Den Bosch, similar uh, at Gillaus. We played each other. Gillaus was another amateur side during those years, so we played each other always on the Saturday. And Arnold and me were playing at the local team here and uh, he went to the Bosch. I went a year after because he's a little bit older than me. Uh, yeah, he was a different class player. He was a similar player like, uh, uh, well, he's a good player because Cruyff bought him from, from Ajax, Amsterdam. He bought him, Cruyff himself called him up and you must come to Ajax. So he came to Ajax, then he go to Feyenoord, then he go to Ajax back. So then you must be a different class player. He was the best player I think uh, FC Den Bosch ever produced. And Gillas was a good player as well. He, he, and he left to PSV Eindhoven. Arnold went to Ajax. And I went to the United. Yeah. So how, how did um, the, the Dundee United uh, transfer happen then? Because um, did you know much about, about them at, at the time? What, what, what made you pick them and, and go to Scotland? Yeah. Well, Jim McLean came here during the uh, summer break and he saw two matches of us and then he introduced me in a hotel with my agent and we talked about blah, blah, blah. And uh, I remember then from 87, of course, the UEFA Cup uh, run they had against Borussia München Gladbach because Bruins, there was a player from Gladbach. I liked him as well, similar as Petsai, a sweeper, white hair, uh, very good player in my opinion and uh, United beat them and we saw them on the television here because... Belgium and German television we can watch here as well easily because we are near the border yeah and uh, 89 he came to me and uh, he wanted to there was no Bosman rule as you as you know and yeah. he wanted to pay the, the transfer fee which was 225,000 pounds at that time and uh, Gilders we were Gilders yeah uh, it was a amount of Gilders and then uh, and then we well then we signed 
Yeah. Um, did you know much? Of, well, you, you said you did, but um, in terms no, of um, no, but there was, no, no, of course not, because there was no computers, there were no yeah. uh, telephones, there were mo- no mobiles, no mobile telephones, no, no, no. This or that. I I, I asked it, uh, Theo Snellers because one year earlier he left he, he, uh, for for Aberdeen. Yeah. And I was a good team, uh, one, two, three, four, five in the league all the time, and blah blah blah. Good players, that's what uh, McLean said, to be honest. Uh, we have good players like Neri, Agatha, etc. When you get a bit old, you must play there. Yeah, we have a good youth system because Alec Clayland and yeah. Connolly and uh, Daly, they're coming through the ranks. So we had to fight for places and I came there and uh, I enjoyed my time. Yeah, We enjoyed our time. Yeah, absolutely. What was it like walking into the, the dressing room for the first time, uh, Freddie? Could you understand a word they were, they were saying? <laughs> Well, in Holland, as you know, we 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 got teached, uh, uh, we learned uh, English uh, when we were 12, 30 years. So I think 95 of the population in Holland they speak fluently Eng- English, but the dialect was completely different. So yeah. uh, my wee one, she's been brought up in the bloody ferry, so she had, <laughs> she had during those years a little bit of Dundonian accent, uh, which was nice when we when we travelled uh, on holiday to Spain or whatever and. Is she from Scotland? No, she's from all of but we live in Scotland, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so the first time was, was uh, I remember the first match was the Sociedad match from uh, Paul Sturrock, his testimonial. Yeah. Uh, at the race, we beat them. And uh, and I played the four matches in the in the, in the in the competition. Then he substituted me, my we, uh, Jim McLean, because I was not fit and I was uh, this and I was that. And poof, crazy time. And I got running on the Hamburg Hill at, at, in Dundee and running, running, running. And then after two two games, he brought me in the team. And I, to be honest, I never got out. Yeah, yeah. What what did you think of Jim McLean? And because he was the, the manager, he was the chairman, um, and his coaching methods. Yeah. Were quite, if, what, if, you, if, if you look back, uh, uh, I think he liked me as a player and as a person. I liked him as well as a, as a, as a manager and a manager. But uh, to look back and to do the things he did is impossible nowadays. He had a very st- stri- strict budget. We fight it for bonuses. Uh, and you signed, and then you get the signing on fee and uh, the wages were normal, not special, but the way of living, we, we liked very much in the ferry. As I said, we wanted to be brought up. I, I was playing always regular, uh, apart from the last half year because I was fed up and I wanted to move. Yeah. That's what I told them, and Goldberg said, "Okay, then we, we we work on that." But then you play uh, uh, not uh, anymore. So no problem. But I want to leave at the end of the season, which happened. Uh, and uh, when I came there, it was crazy at halftime. He, he went crazy to, to to even to very big players like Dave Neri or, yeah. or, or 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 whatever. And Kivoka Pich and me were sitting beside each other, and I said, "Oh, I don't understand because <laughs> let it go, let it fly away." Uh, it worked for us. He was a good tactician. He was a. Uh, it was twenty-four hours job for him. He was never off from football. Uh, and I, uh, if you get older, he will understand that now as well. He's, uh, tragically, he died and he had a bad uh, illness. But I think uh, at the last years of his life, he, he will understand that it uh, could be a little bit less. And you, you, you have to treat people uh, sometimes on a different way, in my opinion, to get more out of them. But in the end of the day, he, had, he was a big manager, uh, tactician, very good. And uh, he hate losing, which is, in my opinion, good as a sportsman. Uh, uh, and he was there when you needed him. You know what I mean? Uh, not only about football, but... but Sometimes you ask him something, but it, it was one line. You know what I mean? Just one yeah. line. It's only that way, highway or or or, yeah. or no way. That's the way it, it, it was. Yeah. And Scottish football, um, how did you find that, Fred, when, when you moved over from uh, Dutch football? Was it a, a big um, culture shock for you? Yeah. Yeah, the pace was, was, was uh, unbelievable. Always the ball in the air. Yeah. Well, I was not that big, but I could... Well, I was not a bad reader of the game, let's say. I don't want to talk about myself, but I was not special in the air, but it was okay in the air, but a lot of crosses and high balls. Intensity was was crazy. Uh, it was not a, it was not a strong uh, walk in the park, eh? so you had to fight for, for the points. 
that, that was the, the main difference. But we had a good good team and a good uh, bond of players and uh, we fight for each other because we want to win the bonuses. That's what, what it's all about. Eh? Yeah, You mentioned some Winning of the players. For the support, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned David Neri, of course, a uh, great Scottish player and a defender as well. Uh, like Sir John Clark was Gentleman. There. Christian Daly was coming through, um, Gordon Pretrich for, for yeah. a time later as well. So some good good players that Dundee United had it in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very good players. And Haggerty, I yeah. play with Haggerty, I play with Neri, I play with Krivoka Pitch. Yeah. Uh, Morris Malpass was there, uh, Bowman, McKinley. Uh, yeah, nice, good team. John O'Neill was a nice yeah. boy, good boy. Yeah, absolutely. Alec Cleland, good Alec player. Alec Cleland, yeah. Duncan Ferguson was coming through. He, he would have been yeah, a young boy. The, the, how, how good was yeah, he, Freddie? The, yeah, he was. Uh, when he when he got sold, he was a different class player. You could see he was uh, uh, better than uh, he was better than the rest. He was. He had good feet. He had arrogance. Uh, I met him when I went to Everton Football Club uh, at the training ground, which was nice to see him uh, long, well, a couple of years ago. Which was nice that he. Uh, yeah, I was a nice boy. His, I remember his father and his sister were at the games. Uh, he came from Sterling, I, I, yeah. I remember. Something. Yeah. yeah, I think he was from Sterling. So he was at, at, at um, he slept in uh, in Dundee and he was a big, a big, big player. Yeah, a good player. Yeah. And you mentioned um, your daughter brought up in, in Brotty Ferry. How much did you, did you enjoy yeah. living up in Dundee and in, in, in that uh, part very of the world? Very much, very much, very uh, much. As I said in the last season, uh, I was fed up, not my wife and not my, yeah. my child, because she had friends there and she went to school. Uh, my wife enjoyed it. We, had, we, we bought a dog in the second season. A quiet life, eh? at, the, at the seaside, quiet life, at, at, a, at, a, at a meal or a, or a dinner whatsoever. Uh, very, uh, 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 the family was very close, sometimes visits over from Holland. Yeah. Uh, Krivokapis lived nearby, so we, we enjoyed our time. As I said, we had the Dutch television with the with the uh, how you call it the schotel, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, outside satellite. the house, yeah, satellite, yeah, and so we had the Dutch television. Uh, yeah, years years gone by, uh, but at that time I was fed up because it was always the same, 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 yeah. and I want to move on. There were a couple of clubs in Holland were interested, which I heard uh, after this uh, in the last season. I uh, I, I was there, 19, 1994, and I said in January I want to I'm finished here. I'm going home, and well, you're not going home. And and, and uh, Jim Green was the chairman, and no chance. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> said, well, I'm fed up. Uh, wait and see what's happened and uh, so I, I, I didn't get a game anymore but I don't care because I knew Jan Keulemans the Belgium, the former Belgium international he was in the team who got it promoted and he said we need you as a, as a sweeper because blah 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 and then we went to Europe as well in that year yeah. when I came there they moved me for, for peanuts I mean, I don't, I, they, yeah, the United won money because uh, I played there for five years, they bought me for two twenty-five, and I think they got back one forty or something like that. He's always a good businessman, me, Jim. Yeah. And uh, well, but they paid it, and I signed up for three years, and we had two, two twice. We had we went to Europe, so it was very nice time in Belgium. Yeah. And then I went back to the Bosch. Yeah. So good time. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And see when you were see when you joined uh, Dundee United, there was a lot of Dutch players in Scottish football at that point. Yeah. Um, like you say, Hill House, yeah. a lot of, five players at Aberdeen, Hoostra Rangers. Yeah. Did, did you ever um, did you did you ever meet them outside of football when uh, when you weren't yeah, playing? Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, uh, we had thirty uh, uh, first uh, of December at the Willem van der Aarke's house. Yeah, drink and this and that, and I drove back at one o'clock in the morning uh, back to to Rossi Ferry. And then we had to, the 1st of January, we played Aberdeen in, uh, at Aberdeen. So then we're back with the bus, we beat them, and then knock it. <laughs> so that, those, those things happen as well. Yeah, we saw each other. We, we, uh, we, uh, we got our license from the uh, uh, motor, motor license in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, I think it was in Dundee, or yeah, I think it was in Dundee. Hill House, myself, and Van der Arik. Yeah. Van der Arik uh, uh, twice because we, uh, he was driving and we with the car, uh, we, we, 
dodgy turns and this and that. So he got he, he doesn't get his license the first time, <laughs> the second time, <laughs> which was nice. And Gilas and myself, we got our license. Uh, so we are we, we yeah. And, and uh, in the Hilton Hotel, uh, there was a swimming pool uh, at at the at, at, uh, at the bridge. So we went there on the Sunday for the swim or whatsoever. So we enjoy our time. Yeah. yeah. How much did you enjoy playing the likes of uh, Aberdeen Rangers and, and Celtic? I know you scored against Celtic a couple of times as well, uh, Freddie. How much did yeah. you enjoy playing against the, the big teams? Yeah, because the atmosphere and the crowd was brilliant, uh, always there. Uh, I love Celtic Football Club. For the, uh, we, we played them myself and was director at Den Bosch. Yeah. Uh, we played them in the pre-season uh, 10 years ago, something like that. I can't remember, but not, not even 10 years ago. So we had my contacts there and we played them at St. Mirren, so which was nice because I loved Celtic Football Club. Uh, and when we played them, yeah, it was always a good... Yeah, we could, we, well, we, we're not winning every time, but we, we, we could... Yeah, we give them a game all the time. Yeah, yeah we compete with them and uh, sometimes winning and sometimes losing, which was great. And uh, especially um, at 10 days with the crowd behind us and, and, and there as well, because big crowds is always nice to play for because in the end of the day that's why you play football for. absolutely yeah did, did you ever play in the, the Dundee derby yeah I played them I, I, I made a mistake in, in one of those because uh, uh, Alan Main said away so I went away but he meant I, I kicked the ball away but I went away and somebody came between us and they scored we beat them but but those things happened as well and yeah we played, uh, I played there as well because uh, Keith Wright, yeah, good player. As a striker, I remember always like that and, uh, and uh, sniffing around, and uh, yeah, it was good. It was good, yeah. And um, the Scottish Cup final, of course, the the one in ninety one. It's, it's it's fondly remembered as being a, a classic game, but not so much so if you're on the Dundee United side. Can you remember much about the the game, Freddie? And and, and uh, yeah, yeah, that day, yeah, that. Uh, that the goal they scored was uh, was a mistake by the referee for sure. Yeah. Uh, I got suspended after the match because I I, I argued with, with that that referee and Clark he got suspended as well. I remember, yeah. so we got three or four match banned in the season uh, in the next season. I remember I hit the post and it, it went by the byline uh, after ten or twenty minutes or something. I remember him his friends scoring a goal which was not offside and they gave yeah. offside. But those things happen. Eh? It's tragedy from that team because it, it's in the stars. Eh? From that team, a lot of people are already died. So, so yeah. what's in the end of the day a medal? Eh? Yeah. And of course, you wouldn't play the one in 94 because by that point, you, you'd already said no. you, were, you were going to leave. <laughs> were you at hand in that during the day? No, no. I was. I, we were traveling at that, day, at that day. I was at the boat. We were, oh, <laughs> we were packing in and uh, on, the, on the Friday... <coughs> put our house for sale. I was not for, I not uh, been sold at that moment of time, but I just packed in and uh, we went back home. And uh, when we uh, came off the boat, I heard they uh, winning the final, which was happy for them. And uh, congratulate, of course, congratulations, blah blah blah, because I was uh, part of the dressing room when I played some matches in the in the in the in the first rounds from the cup. So very good and nice, especially for the people uh, yeah. for the city. Dundee was good. For the club, the United was good. For we, Jim, although he was chairman, uh, it was good to get the, the the cup as well. And for the boys, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So Very you good. left in, and then, yep, yeah, left, two three weeks to, later they sold me. Yeah, you went you went to Belgium. Then you said there was some there was a couple of teams interested in you at that point. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Groningen, Utrecht in Holland, but they couldn't. Uh, uh, pay the transfer fee because uh, once again there was no Bosman ruling at uh, at that time. And uh, Aals, they got promoted, so I went to Antwerp, which is a uh, 45-minute drive from where I live. And uh, I meet Jan Keulemans, and he said, I want you, and nobody else but you, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, wait and see what's happening. And then they, uh, two, three weeks after the final, uh, they sold me, because, well, the house was for sale, uh, yeah. uh, was not sold. The solicitor was busy with it, but they sold it, and... Uh, Everything was arranged, and then I went to Belgium, and that's really good times. Yeah, and you, you said that, you mean you played in Europe. I was reading some of it. You played against the likes of Levski, Sofia. You beat them, then you, you played Roma. Yeah, 
Um, I know he yeah. scored a, an own goal in Rome, but what was that like to play against them? They had Totti and all that playing for them. Uh, it was a great team. And we were not a big team. We, we, we had a very, we were a team like uh, uh, St. Johnson, let's say. Yeah, it's a similar type of, 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 of club. Uh, but with a big uh, 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 support uh, because they were promoted and uh, they will struggle in the first season. So they needed somebody from the back who can uh, uh, well, read the game or this or that. But we had very, very good players like Opara, Nigerian internationally played at, in Scotland uh, yeah. uh, when he was 50, 60 years. We had Jill de Wilde, who was player of the season in yeah. Belgium at that year. Oh, unbelievable. Uh, we had Van der Hagen, who became internationalist, uh, and uh, yeah, We had a very good team. So we went to Europe. We, went, we finished fourth in the league or something like that, and year after again. And then I was fed up again, similar as in, 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 in Scotland. And I said, I move on. No, but blah, blah, blah. I said, no, I move on. And then I packed everything in. And then in December, I went to the bush. <laughs> always, always strange moves. <laughs> So it must have I mean to finish your career. You finish your career there. You spent a good six years there. Um, yeah, the, yeah, a couple of promotions as well. So it was a, a good time for yeah. you back then. Yeah, brilliant time. Uh, very good time. Uh, first, I came in December, so we finished, uh, let's say, sixth. Yeah. The year after, we went. Uh, we were promoted. So was uh, yeah. Was I said captain? So we been promoted. Then we got relegated with three, 33 points, which was unbelievable because if you reach now 33 points, you are, uh, uh, let's say, number 12 or something like that in the in the table. We are, uh, Den Bosch is a team in the south of Holland, nearby PSV uh, and I'll say a lot of teams are here in this area. So it's, uh, and it's not a, a city. It's a very nice, one of the, not because it's our city, but one of the nicest city in, in, in the Netherlands. Everybody will tell you that. Uh, with, with, together with Maastricht and Amsterdam, of course, but you know why Amsterdam. But the Bosch is a very nice city. But the hockey is very popular here, and basketball is very popular. And football, we have the similar crowd as Millwall. So the, when it's uh, it's a big awesome. game, it's always uh, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's always let's say trouble. They are very passionate. Uh, uh, some people like, some people don't like, but they don't care. Eh? That's the song, it's similar as Millwall. Uh, so we get promoted, then we get relegated again, and then we've been promoted as well, again. So which was uh, u- unique, eh? back in after a year. And then I was nearly 39 years old. I played all the matches in the in the Eredivisie. I had a very good season, actually. I could have uh, signed on, but I was, I, was, I was finished. I was ready with football. Yeah. Because in the dressing room was a big gap. I was 39. The boys are 18, 20 years, and they're talking about things uh, I was forgotten. <laughs> yeah. How, but that's a that's a great age to keep playing until too... um, Freddie did. I guess you must have kept yourself in shape and Jim McLean. That's Jim. That, that's Jim McLean. Yeah. Jim McLean's his way, yeah, because all the players he he treated were all fit, fit, fit. Look at your foot. Look at your fitness. Uh, look at Dave Neary, for example. Haggerty yeah. Mop is all uh, very old to play for. I did myself because it's the nicest thing in, to do. Uh, I loved it. It's uh, just a 10 minutes drive here to the stadium. Uh, uh, I had some uh, personal titles, which I was proud of. You've been promoted, which I was proud of. And I finished at, 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 yeah, at an old age. Yeah. Did you have a, a testimonial or a farewell game at, at Den Bosch? No, it's in, in, in Holland, we don't have testimonial don't matches. Have- we have just... Uh, just a nice bonus. Yeah. <laughs> and what was it like playing against, I know you asked you about um, the likes of Rangers and Celtic, but coming up against the, the big clubs in, in Holland, the likes of Ajax, Feyenoord and, and PSV, how, how much did you enjoy that? Yeah, they, very much, especially against PSV because that's 20 minutes drive from here. So that's a, a well, derby, let's say, similar to St. Johnson against the United. Uh but those teams are uh, the gap between those teams and 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 the, and the other teams is, is especially against the boss is too big. So yeah. you will always promote like say three, four, or five nothing. You can you can write it down in advance at home. Well, you can beat them. Maybe beat Feyenoord here at home, uh, for example. But there'll always be a struggle, and normally you can you can put the cards uh, where it goes. Yeah. So there's too big a gap. It's, it's not really a, a, 
which is not good for the league, in my opinion. Yeah, I know when you when you retire from playing, um, yeah, a couple of spells is in, in caretaker charge of of the club. Is that right? Did did you want to go into no, coaching, I, Freddie? Uh, now not at that moment of time. I, I I look after it, but it's it's not easy, especially nowadays with all the social media, etc., to to manage a team. You, you must be a lot of pampering and shoulders and very good and this <laughs> and that. Uh, so it's 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 another game, another football game. So I became uh, straight after my last. Uh, game we went on holiday for a couple of weeks and then I came back and they asked me to to become the technical director of the club which I did for uh, let's say 15 years or something like that and it's here the system if you have a director and you have a, a CEO those two are uh, uh, trying to get the club uh, uh, in shape and underneath is uh, the coach which is the most important uh, part of the of, of the club actually the coach with the staff and the players and I'm working with the staff and the players uh, for a long time we've been promoted as well two years in the, the second year we've been promoted which was uh, very good uh, and then we struggled money wise because you, you can have a policy or a, or, or a plan or whatsoever it's all about money in the end of the day uh, we sold a lot of players we sold them to to, to big clubs to start and then to Millwall football club we, start, we signed uh, we sold a striker to, to Vitesse Arnhem to everywhere some became international, actually, which we scouted in the Netherlands and they become international playing European finals, which was good. And then uh, during those 50 years, sometimes I got sacked a coach as well. And then the assistant coach uh, took it over and I assist him. And that's why they said caretaker manager. Yeah. And the work you do now, you've got your um, sports management, uh, football so after Yeah. I, after 15 years, I was, uh, uh, well, both the club was fed up, the supporters were fed up, and I was fed up with the club. So uh, uh, we uh, we got out of each other, which was uh, nicely done. So everybody was okay. Uh, was quite big in the paper, but those things happened after a long time of period. Uh, good or wrong, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> uh, we were ready with that. And then I was at home. Uh, there were a couple of clubs who were interested in me for scouting or uh, whatsoever. Uh, but I did, didn't want to work at that moment of time for a club. And then uh, I had a plan uh, because of my network in the Netherlands. I went to uh, some uh, big sponsors from the club and they, were, uh, they are now all part of my company, as you had seen maybe on the website we have, FSM uh, BV. That's uh, an agency where we uh, look after 32 players uh, and two uh, Olympic players as well. Uh, first and foremost, we, uh, because I have a lot of agents, they have all the best players in the world and they can send you tapes and tubes or whatsoever and look, this is good in that and that. But at the end of the day, it's about uh, uh, how they, they, they develop. So we have, as I said, 32 players are on the contract at clubs and uh, we have, uh, well, FSM is built up by five, six founders. They... Uh, have shares from the for the from the company. We uh, we committed each other till 2025. So first and foremost, I look. Uh, well, you can say after yourself, yes, that's right. But first and foremost, I must have rest to work for players because I'm I'm I don't want to transport players to there or this. It has to be good, right for them. Yeah. So I don't look after the money. I like I look after developing. At the end of the day, if they are 35 or let's say 37. Then we must look after the balance. How did we do it all together? So we try to look after them from A to Z. We have Mark Lammers, the uh, golden uh, medalist winner from hockey, who's looking after players if they need it for mentality, mental coaching. We have a dietitian from the Olympic team who look after what are they eating if they need it. We have a boot supply. We have car supplies. We have accountancy. We have solicitors. We have uh, uh, today... We uh, look at LinkedIn. We have uh, a sports uh, physiotherapist who looking after them during the close season or whenever they have an injury to bring them back as, as soon as possible and as good as it can be. So we look after the players. Uh, we all give that to the players and we can give that to the players because of the founders we have, the shareholders. Uh, they, they look after the, the partners we have and all the partners looking after the players or to the uh, uh, to the. Uh, 
uh, agency for me. We have players in Iceland. We had players in Iceland. We have them in Australia. We have them in Turkey. But when I went to Turkey, the the, the rights are completely different than in Scotland or in the Netherlands. So we, uh, a lawyer came to me. He fly to me uh, to the club, uh, look after the contracts, and then we sign. We have a player at Notts County Football Club last season. Uh, they took him from FC Den Bosch. He's there now. He's playing very, very well. Actually, a very good player. So uh, the people in Scotland must look after him, in my opinion. Uh, he scored a lot of goals. He went to Notts County. And uh, well, those contracts are similar to, to the Scottish uh, uh, contracts, actually. But we look after them. We have a, co- a collaboration with Juventus Football Club as well, because Slivka, the player from the Burnians, yeah. uh, two years ago, he played for Hibs. Uh, Vikinta Slivka, we brought him from Juventus. To Hibernians, uh, uh, Gray Marty did, uh, did, uh, did that. So uh, we, uh, 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 we have the lawyers, as I said, and they're looking after the, the contracts as well when players go working abroad. Yeah, yeah it sounds absolutely fantastic, Fred. I guess as a player, when you were playing, I guess that, that was something that you never had back then. I guess, um, did you have an agent back when, when uh, you was were different. playing? We- Ja, yeah, uh, Ton van Dahl, de similar one of Peter Huistra, Theo Snell, dat is wel een ander aardig. En Gilas did it as well, so he looked after us, but it was differently, because yeah. it was more, we, 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 we placed the player in Scotland, and uh, on you go, and when you finish your contract, you call me, and we look after the contract. It was more business-wise. Yeah. Okay, we have a business-wise uh, 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 responsibility, but in my opinion as well, uh, a development uh, uh, responsibility. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's 24 7 job. Eh? The, the, the young players, eh? we have 32 players under contract, and we have seven players who don't have a contract, but they're playing for a professional football club. And how can they be? A prof- uh, uh, what is a professional football player? Eh? It's not just playing on, on from three to five uh, a match and training this and that. No, but you have to make a plan. Uh, this is what is what we're going to do, and there we want to be, become step by step. Uh, I played with Van Nistelrooy as well at the Bos, and he had a plan. He said, "I want to be here now, but I want to finish there." So how are you going to do that? And of course, it's going always up and down because uh, uh, the victory is is uh, faster gone than the defeat. Uh, but how you gonna uh, how you gonna act? How you uh, work with media? How you uh, everything? A lot of a lot of things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we wish you all the best going forward with that, that Fred. I just wanted to ask, I, I, I was going to ask you about um, Ruud van Nistelrooy. I didn't know you, you, he was there at the same time, but I guess, was he at yeah. Den Bosch when you were there as a young boy? No, no. When I came back from Belgium, he was there. Yeah. So we played with each other and uh, at that time he asked how was Scotland and how was this and how was that. So yeah, it's, it's upside down and, and, and he went to Eredivisie. They sold him for, uh, for the money. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Eh? He exploded at Heerenveen. He went to PSV. They could have bought him as well from FC Den Bosch because he's 20 minutes drive, but they didn't fancy him at that time. And then the year after, they bought him for 20 million. So that's the way it goes in football as well. Yeah. Was there any player that you came up against, you played against, that was the, the best player that gave you the uh, the toughest afternoon in Holland or, or Scotland? Is there anyone that springs to mind? Well, Van Basten was a good player. Oh, yeah. He was, he was a special <laughs> player. Uh, Bosman was difficult because he was good in, very good in the air, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fonseca uh, was a good Adano, player. Yeah. And Fonseca, he was a great uh, So, yeah, we, yeah, we're a good player. Yeah, there are a lot of good players. Eh? You need a little bit of football, is a little bit of luck as well. And how is your team adapting and, and uh, yeah. perform? And, yeah, a lot of good players. Fanista was a good player. Not at that time, but he uh, he became a very good player. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. was always hard to handle. Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine so, yeah. And, of course, the, the Euros are not far away um, in the summer, uh, Freddie. In terms of the Netherlands, it's been an up and down few years for them, hasn't it? How, how do you see them uh, yeah. getting on? Well, they are unlucky, of course. Van Dijk is injured, but the Licht is, is, is fully fit now. The squad is now training here in the, in the, at the Dutch camp. Uh, I think, well, they're not the, not the biggest favourite, in my opinion. France will be uh, yeah. very good. Belgium has maybe the last chance to, to become uh, very good. They have a very good squad, but they're getting a little bit old, maybe uh, in defence. 
But Belgium and, and Germany will always there be around, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be good to. And Holland, I think. I think, uh, I think we will we will finish four or something like that. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, we we'll look forward to it, that's for sure. Well, it's been absolutely brilliant having you on. I really enjoyed not, hearing not that the good time in the gear. Okay, me too.